YouTube, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage here, back in Total War Warhammer 2 on Techless campaign with the High Elves of the Order of Lore Masters. This is actually slightly different. You'll notice this is turn six. Slightly different than where I left off because when I left off of that last one, I honestly think that, like, I think I gave you guys some good tips to start that one, but I found a better way, and I want to explain it to you when you're starting your own techless campaign. So this is the same difficulty, very hard difficulty, and um, it's the same, yeah, like I said, it's the same, same difficulty level. So what I'm suggesting when you all get started, uh, last time I took the time to get Lothar and Sea Guards because they're so good, but in that amount of time, the Lizards were training even more troops over here with their Slan Mage Priest and getting more troops over here at Golden Ziggurat. So what I did this time was instead of training up Lothar and Seaguard, I just quickly got extra archers and spearmen. And even on the very first turn, I attacked the Sentinels of Zeti army here and immediately pushed to the Golden Ziggurat and then immediately pushed across the Sentinels of Zeti. And by that time, the Slan Mage Priest had not actually recruited more troops. And so he retreated back to the Golden Colossus, allowing me to easily take the Sentinels of Zeti very quickly um, and there, we will still hit a rebellion here in a six turns. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly push the Golden Colossus as well from the Sentinels of Zeti. Uh, we do have access to uh, the extra... Um, we can recruit troops here is what I'm trying to say. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and we're going to be losing quite a lot of money by doing this. But we're going to get um, one more Spearman and a couple more Archers just to fill our army up bigger and that way it makes it easier for us to plow over the lizards down in the, the Golden Colossus. Like I said, we're gonna be losing a fair amount of money, but we can afford it for a turn or two. Now see this, the Slan Mage Priest has put himself in a terrible position because I've just recruited more troops and he didn't make it in time to siege me before I got them. So that's why I feel like this strategy is just better. We need a non-aggression with the Spinosotech Dwarves and destroy the following faction. So you definitely want to pay attention to those missions because those ritual resources will help you stay ahead of your enemy and we have to pay a lot of attention to it. Income, denounce the messenger. We don't want unhappy populace. We can probably afford you know, a little less um, income because we don't have any building income anyway really. So we can handle that. Gain some influence. I'm going to keep working on Militia Master because I am going to be getting a lot of Spearmen and Lothar and Sea Guard. Um, but at this point, we're going to move out against the uh, against Boki, the Slan Mage Priest. And we're going to massacre him because we recruited the extra troops. Like I said, right now we're just depending on a bunch of cheap troops to get us through uh, this initial fight. And then we're going to stop and get a proper army once we have time to get that proper army. So right now it's just all about the early aggression to get these lizards out of the way before they get out of control. Because uh, they would have gotten quite out of control on me um, very quickly. Okay, we got this foe bane, which is great. It's going to give us a bonus versus large. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to hunt down the rest of the mage priest army. Can replenish our units a little bit. Wisdom leads me. And we're going to wait right outside of the Lizardmen territory. You can see they're already making another army down there. That, that's why I'm saying you have to get rid of these guys quickly because they get, um, they get economic cheats as part of the difficulty setting. So you cannot give them time. Alright, sweet. We just picked up some uh, way fragments there. And we picked up treasury, which we need because we're bleeding a little bit of money at the moment. So that was definitely all good. Let's check our missions here too, jungle dominance. So we need to maintain control of an entire province, which we can do. We don't have a turn limit there, which is good. Enhance our city so we can build an elven colony and get more way fragments. Uh, build an archive, a grand repository, or a garden to get more way fragments. Um, search a settlement and destroy this faction, which we are close to doing. Okay. So we are out of movement. Um, let's go ahead. So like I said, pay close attention to the missions. The missions will help you earn um, extra ritual resources. Now you can see that the Sentinels of Zeti are just getting desperate because they know what's going to happen. That is why we take this strategy that I explained to you. So I do want you to use the Lothar and Sea Guards because they're stupid good. 
but just use the cheap units to get very aggressive initially. Look at this, if we use the uh, do the invocation of Isha, we get 1500 and then 30 influence and 10 wave fragments. If you look at your rights, um, so the enemy was killed in battle, if you look at our rights, here is the uh, invocation of Isha. It cost us 2000, but we're gonna get 1500 of it back, so it's actually a really good deal because we get buffed uh, replenishment rate and then um, it'll untaint our provinces of any corruption and it makes us immune to attrition, so we're gonna perform the right, that's perfect timing, heading into the desert. And we get the uh, 10 wave fragments, which is going to keep us competitive, hopefully, against our enemies here. And then we got to hurry and get to the Blood Hall, but we're going to have to come back to our home province first. So, construct the Shrine of Ashurian. Ashurian. We'll take care of all that. Let's get down here and wreck the Golden Colossus. My powers are needed here. It's a decisive victory. Could sack it and get the 1655, but I don't want to sit around for an extra turn, so we're just going to raise it. It's going to gain us a little bit of influence, which is great. That influence can be very handy for getting better lords or heroes here soon. So we got 10 more wave fragments. See, we're competitive now with our uh, our enemies because we're following these missions, and we got to continue to follow the missions. Teclas ranks up again. I'm going to do this uh, Bowmaster because I'm... Actually, let's get the, the potion of Sheroy, because this actually makes um, Teclas quite a lot stronger. And then, um, actually thinking about getting... Chain Lightning and Net of Amontok would be a nice touch together, because you could use the two and potentially cause a lot of damage. Okay, we're going to uh, end the turn because we can't move. And I'm actually... How long do we have? We have a little bit of time... Yeah, we got plenty of time here, so I think I might actually circle down here real quick and then go over and uh, settle the Mud Isles. And then we can search it for treasure as well, which will help us complete another um, another mission. Because we don't want to settle in the desert. You can see here this red ring. Settling the desert would be more trouble than it's worth because of all these negatives that we get for, for settling in a climate that doesn't suit us. All right, if we get to 350 wave fragments, it's going to give us 2,000 gold and a couple of influence. We finished our technology research, so let's go back in. And let's go ahead and do our spear wall work here, which will increase the weapon strength of our spearmen. We're going to rely on spearmen for a pretty good while. Some, some people may think that that's boring, but it's just good strategy at this point to rely on the spearmen. So let's see how many turns. So if I go this way, it's going to be... Actually, it thinks it's just faster to go this way, so let's go that way. All right, so there we go. We're going to work our way over to the Mud Isles. Look, there's treasures out here, too, that we want to go pick up because you can get quick money and cool items from the treasures. Look, there's another one down here as well. In fact, I'm thinking if we just recruit a crappy lord that we don't pay any influence for, like this indolent princess, <laughs> we'll use her to go collect some of these treasures. And uh, yes, it's going to lose us some money, but I think it, it could potentially be worth it for us in terms of picking up a good item or something like that. So let's go ahead and end another turn. We're not going to hold on to her permanently. I'm just going to use her temporarily. And we could even cut back a few of our um, units at the moment if we need to. So like, for instance, we could, um, we could probably disband one archer and one spearman to help slow the rate at which we're bleeding money because we just don't need them at the moment. Okay, out to the treasure. Perfect. See, look at that. 5,000 gold. That's what I'm talking about. That's why it's worth it to go after the treasure. Boom. Don't mind if I do. Help myself. My infinite knowledge is yours. All right. If you have infinite knowledge, then how come I have to do the research tree? Just saying, buddy. Just saying. A shameful display! Darn right, it's a shameful display. Okay. We're gonna search the mud aisles for treasure. So treasure hunt. While searching the ruin of an ancient ruins of an ancient city, you have the feeling that your every move is being watched. I, and I am so bad at these treasures. I get it wrong like every time. Cautiously, you proceed in an abandoned building. 
A dummy wall reveals a shrine to the great necromancer, Nagash himself. So we can abandon the shrine, we can put it to the torch, we can purify it, or we can search. Let's search it. There is nothing of value within the shrine. During the course of the search, you begin to feel different. What a bunch of crap! See, this always happens to me, clearly. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> I swear I always screw it up. <laughs> oh well. Oh man, that's what happens. Well, we'll have to settle this on the next turn, because you can't colonize on the same turn, so... There we go. <laughs> One of these days, maybe I'll stop stinking. I swear the treasure hunts are freaking stacked against me. <laughs> it's hilarious, though, like all the stuff that happens to me. All right, we're going to build up this uh, elven artisan, help get a little extra income and trade trade goods. And I'm loving this campaign. I it is really fun. I've had a few spots where the AI is not real great responsive, but they haven't released the day one patch yet either. So I'm gonna give Creative Assembly the benefit of the what kind of protection do I have here? By the way, decent enough. We're gonna, I'm gonna give Creative Assembly the benefit of the doubt until we get to the day one patch. Um, but that's really honestly, and, I, and I'm being serious about this, and I'm not saying there isn't anything else, but that's the only kind of buggy thing I've noticed is like on a choke point map or on a siege map, sometimes the AI gets, and it's not every time, it's just sometimes they get a little bit stupid. Um, and, and when I say stupid, I mean even more stupid than the typical AI. Oh, we got more wave fragments there, that's good. More treasury. Can rebuild the mud isles and uh, we do want to build this up but honestly I'm about to get attacked by rebels so we're gonna wait just one turn so that I don't spend the money and then get shrecked okay so techless is gonna be replenishing um, this Lord still has movement ah here's our treasure come on be be good treat me good okay crap well we got a search here so in the aftermath it says clearly two ships met in combat and brought each other low the rival crews downing, uh, drowning in the battle and hatred, but their loss could be your gain. As the sunken ships lean on each other in an unstable fashion, time is short. Salvage must be sought quickly. So we can do a haul of true silver, and our army will do better in battle, or we can do a sunken chest, and our army will perform better in campaign. Maybe the campaign stuff, just for now. So we got a trunk of maps, which increases magic item drop tents and campaign line. Ooh, we picked up a relic sword, too. That'll come in handy. It's not great, but it's something. So, not great, but we made out all right. I think I'm going to disband this lady now because I don't see any other treasure right now. We may bring back our indolent princess to search for more treasure. I think there's one way up there, but it's... We can wait. <coughs> so we're going to kick her. Sorry, folks. I'm not dying. Just swallowed wrong. We can issue the, um, what do you call it? Commandments. We're going to do this one that gives us extra growth until this province maxes up. And then the thing that I like to do is turn around and do this um, tax rate and income from trade. At least that's the way I like to handle it. Like I said, I'm not doing the, uh, the building up here yet just because... I want to wait until after I get rid of these rebels first. Rebel scum. I need to put that on my soundboard, huh? Put the rebel scum up. Okay. Techless the feckless is ready to move on. Ooh, I just made up a lame joke, folks. He's actually not feckless. He's, he's actually pretty dang good. I don't know about multiplayer, but he is pretty dang good in the campaign. I find him to be a pretty powerful lord. We're actually going to come out here to sea, and we'll get into the Great Turtle Isle from the sea. And we have a ton of money, so I'm not terribly worried about going ahead and building the Elven Colony, because it's going to help me with the mission anyway. And letting the Rebellion go a bit longer kind of makes sense. Speed for spearmen and archers and stuff, that, that couldn't hurt. Yeah, let's do that. The trumpeters. Okay. We're going to end the turn. Okay, so the turn has ended. The rebels still have not attacked us, which is perfectly fine with me. I'm going to 
replenish, and then we'll smash the Rebel Scum. You now have Illyrian Reapers and, uh, Reavers and an Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. But you can see that it took down the, um, the level of unhappiness in our province a considerable amount. The Sentinels of Zeti, though, is going to be getting close to the Rebellion itself. So we'll want to head over here as soon as we um, set stuff up in the Turtle Isles. And then we'll go take the Chamber of Visions, and then we can start. We can build the building that helps us get extra wave fragments. Because you can see we're still falling just a little bit behind the enemy factions up here in the race to the uh, rituals. So let's take care of business. But you can see that my strategy this time paid off much better than the way I was doing things last time. We already got a couple of treasures. We've already secured the home province. Uh, we've already gotten rid of, rid of the Sentinels of Zeti. We're going to easily shut down these um, rebels here because now we have the combined force of uh, our garrison plus this. So attack a foe and then we have to deal with this rogue army. Here's our first rogue army. So they pop up. This one's an empire army, a band of pirates. So if we defeat them in battle, we pick up a good number of wave fragments and some treasury and influence, which sounds good to me. I mean, they don't need to incentivize me that much to destroy a rogue army, but I'll take it. Lost a spearman, not a big deal. Punish on our units. Got some treasury. Killed the enemy rebel princess. She must maybe that was the same indolent princess that we were dealing with. <laughs> We've got better income now, so let's go ahead and uh, make a switch here. We're gonna boot all these archers, and we're gonna swap over to Lothern Sea Guard. So four Lothern Sea Guard and the Spearmen. Ah, heck, let's make it five Lothern Sea Guard. It's probably going to put us in the negative, but these guys are totally worth it. If we really want to smash our enemies, we're going to have to extend a little bit. Okay, there we go. Um, we've got this wed to etiquette. The Phoenix King and the Ever Queen have received an invitation to the wedding of a court noble. The king does not care much for them. But it would be impolite. Attending, however, requires that he bring a lavish gift. Whispers say that the engaged noble fancies himself a scholar with a penchant for arcane and magical tomes. This would endear the Phoenix King to the betrothed to be, but there are perhaps other gifts that other guests would consider more impressive. So we can decline, which gives us campaign movement range, but it also takes away influence. We can ex uh, offer a large gift, which gives us a ton of influence, but takes away treasury, which I'd really rather not do right now. Or we have to go with an unhappy populace. I don't like any of these, honestly. I'd rather just lose the 10 influence than lose what precious treasury I have at the moment. Oh, no, 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 a happy populace. Actually, this would be fantastic. Sorry, I read that wrong. I would gladly pay five influence to get a happy populace, and we're organizing a chariot race, and Ben-Hur would approve. Ben Hur would approve. Hey, hey, Carl Franz, do you do you think my Ben Hur reference was worth it or not? This action does not have my consent. No, oh, he said action, but I think he meant that 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 uh, reference didn't have his consent. Sorry, Carl. I'll I'll do better next time, buddy. I'll do better. I promise. All right, I got to get more stuff up on my soundboard too. Here we go. So Techless levels up. Uh, we're gonna start doing Bowmaster now that we have the Lothern Sea Guard. And we are ready to start moving against this uh, rogue army here. Look at that. Five Sea Guard. The Sea Guard are very good. We could get another Spearman, but to be honest, there's not a lot of point. We Our infantry isn't all that good. Your Sea Guard are what does all your killing. Um, I'm actually going to just grab one more Sea Guard while we're in our home province because it'll make us much stronger versus our enemies. Uh, we don't really need to worry about militia training and stuff. So let's do the reload time reduction for our Sea Guard. Don't you know that the Lothern Sea Guard are really happy that Creative Assembly named them the Lothern Sea Guard instead of the Guard Seaman, like on Napoleon Total War? E you know what I mean? Yeah, those poor guys. Alright, so mission successful. We built the Elven Colony. We got a thousand, one influence, and six wave fragments. But you can see we are still behind. So we need to quickly get up to the Chamber of Visions and capture it. We're going to move up to this point. 
and we're going to get ready to attack the rogue army, and we will absolutely slaughter them with this mini Sea Guard. Now, Sea Guard with shields are better, and we'll eventually swap up for them. Look at this Swordmaster of Hoeth, already up to level 7 <laughs> because of the wanton slaughter of lizardmen. Ooh, sweet. We can get more buildings now. This is great. Fantastic. There's trade resources here, so we definitely want to make use of the clay pit. Um, the port is going to increase our income and growth pretty substantially, so definitely worth it as well. And then I think what we should do here, um, I'd love to get um, some cavalry available to us. So let's go ahead and build the grazing meadows. I'd like to have a building that boosts public order, but we're just going to have to live without for a little while longer. Okay. Right now our public order is a little higher than usual because we have the, the right of Isha or Invocation of Isha. Okay, there's some Skaven up in the mountains there. Do Skaven exist? I don't know if they ever confirmed that. Alright. So here we are. We're ready to attack the Pirates of the Sea. We're going to declare war on them. Should we slaughter the Empire? I think we should. Or, I shouldn't say the Empire. These Pirates of the Far Sea, which are clearly... Empire citizens out looking for treasure and fame in the new world, but Yeah, probably should have been careful when stepping on the territory of Teclas Oh my goodness these guys are gonna get yeah, it's not gonna be good not for them It's gonna be great for me, and I'm gonna be really happy about it. We're gonna put Teclas out here up front He's got a fireball also, which is pretty cool Put our infantry in a second line. Frostheart Phoenix. Perfect. Let's rock and roll. Let's go check out uh, the Empire units. Uh, I swear the graphics in um, Warhammer 2 are much better than they are in Warhammer 1. Like, much better. The, the, the terrain looks better. The textures look better. The lighting is better. I mean, it just looks great. The game is absolutely beautiful. She got these pirates. They look freaking awesome. Look at that back there. I mean, the surroundings in this game. Right, whoa, here comes the mortars. Let's go check that out, too. Are they going to fire at my Frostheart Phoenix? Good luck. Just look at this beautiful landscape. Now, of course, I'm running on ultra settings. And uh, I will wait again till release day whenever I benchmark the uh, the game. Right now in the pre-release version, and they did update the NVIDIA drivers, I'm benchmarking, uh, and you can go check out my computer specs on the About tab of my YouTube page, I'm benchmarking at about 82 frames a second on Ultra presets. Um, and so yeah, that's the, the benchmark. They actually added a campaign benchmark and a battle benchmark, which is pretty cool. You can test both now. And uh, I'm, I'm benchmarking well on both of them. It was at about 74, I think. And then when they updated the NVIDIA drivers, it went up by about seven frames a second. And again, I'm running at 2K, not 1080p. Most people are probably running in 1080p. Um, so yeah, it would make a difference. But the game has run good for me. Not as many frames a second as Warhammer, but also it's a trade-off because this this one has considerably better graphics. Of course, I'm looking forward to them unlocking the Blood Mod. I, I've heard that if you own the Blood Mod in Warhammer 1, you don't have to get it for Warhammer 2, and that would be pretty cool of CA to do that. Because a lot of people don't feel like that should be... Or, sorry, not a mod. A lot of people don't feel like that should be a, uh, a DLC... I guess I understand that position, but... Okay, we're gonna wreck their uh, free company militia. Let's take our Frostheart Phoenix and go shut down the... Uh... <laughs> you don't want to charge in here, pistol ears. Now, see, this is why you want the Sea Guard with shields, but even these guys, not bad at 40 armor. But yeah, see, I've already gotten their reload time buffed from research. And uh, right now they're at 20 missile damage. I've seen my Sea Guard get as high as like almost 40 or 41 missile damage in the uh, fun campaign that I was playing with Teclas prior to playing this one for you. Hear me. 
We're gonna start dropping the hurt over here with Teclas, so Doom Flock Overcast, and then hit him with the Fireball as well. Now our Sea Guard can finish massacring the uh, Free Company Militia and the Pistoliers. What's that turn to face with some of our shielded infantry? Teclas got himself a few kills off that fireball. I like it. All right, Frostheart Phoenix got the job done against the mortar. Let's take out these free company militia. All right, we've murdered these guys. Teclas, take on the uh, Empire Captain here. That is gonna. So the only downside to that potion is it increases your uh, ability recharge time by 30 seconds. So I should have waited, cast my spells, and then used it. That's the best strategy with it. So let's watch Teclas take on this captain of the empire or the captain of these pirates at least get him techless don't be so feckless uh, nothing else rhymes with techless I'm sorry people I won't do it anymore <laughs> let's give techless some help because he's getting his crap kicked by the empire captain over here good grief techless you all kinds of suck I forgot he has terrible weapon damage alright so techless uh, let's get our... S wow, my sword masters have just been over here getting shrek by something and I haven't been paying attention. Way to go, Air. Don't worry, folks. Patchy's still alive and well. Plop a fireball over there. Oh, there's another mortar. That's probably what was killing my uh, sword masters. Yeah, that's what was aiming at my sword masters. Good grief, that mortar got some work done, too. Okay, we should be able to overwhelm this guy now. We've gotten some good healing done, but we are in a blob, so we need our Frostheart Phoenix to get over here and shut down the mortar. Come get him, birdie. I need to turn my uh, unlocked camera back on as well. There we go. Eat your dinner, bird. Thank you. All right, so the rebel army. Yeah, I probably let him do a little too much damage, but we had fun. We got you some close-ups, some cinematic views. If you don't have any eye candy, then what's the campaign worth? Gotta have some in there, right? Boy, I forgot how how terrible Teclas really is in, in Melee until As you get I some solid upgrades and weapons them. and stuff going on him. He's not bad once you get him a little more upgraded and on different mounts, We're to be honest. Ooh, we got a Trickster's Pendant. We'll see if that's any good. Shackle them. How did they run past me and further into my... I mean, that's that's just stupid. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, we're going to flee straight past you. If you don't mind, just kind of... Just scoot out of the way. we we, we got to come on past. Well, that got us some good way fragments, some good income that we need because we're not making uh, a lot of money right now. Any treasures pop up? Sometimes treasures pop up. No. Okay, there's still that one up north. But we got to go get rid of these Dark Elves of the uh, Blood Coven. I believe that's their name. The Blood Hall Coven, my bad, yeah. There is no limit to my so the Blood Hall Coven must die. Let's go ahead. I mean, I'd like to upgrade the main chain settlement first. Let's get these smaller ones because we can finish off the buildings here. So yeah, let's go ahead and do... Wait fragments. Wait fragments. Okay, it's the same number regardless because if I build this, so I've got got the clay pit I could build this one up and then put another elven artisan in here let's check our building tree real quick because we kind of need the gardens said we're a court plaza theater amphitheater shrine so we need to build the shrine too that was one of our missions okay see what we can do here so we're taking advantage of our trade resources that's important did we get any have we exposed any new factions the blood hall coven we don't need to even worry about trading with it's not going to work pirates of the farsi okay all right so if i improve this one the golden ziggurat we could build like some defenses or something but there's not anything else helpful to build there if i build this one i could do more income but I could also wait and then upgrade to the large elven colony 
because I already have two population points and I need four. I mean, that's seven turns. How about we build this one up and for the time being we put another um, farm there to help get us more growth for the time being and then we can swap it out for whatever we need later on. Okay, so the Pirates of the Far Sea, got through the turn, it's time to wreck these guys. They are running away again. Okay, can you just die already? I had enough. Good grief. Alright, we picked up a Dragon Scale Shield that has a small ward save along with it, and Teclas hit rank 10, which, you know, we're not going to complain about that. Going to upgrade our Lothern Sea Guard again. And uh, eventually, though, we'll want Flaming Sword of Rune, Chain Light, uh, Ruin, Chain Lightning. Um, it'd be good to get down to this Elven Healing, but that's a lot of points to spend down in this tree that I'm honestly not like super thrilled to spend stuff on. So, yeah. All right, so let's spend our point here on Bowmaster. Start walking back this way as quick as we can. We're about to hit that rebellion over here. Okay, we're going to end the turn. Uh, public order is looking decent over here for now, though, which is always good. Let's check out Teclas to make sure. Yeah, he put on the dragon skill shield. Ruby ring, we got our fireball. Nothing else. Talisman of protection. Sweet, he's got some ward saves now, but he was still getting the crap kicked out of him by that, uh, by that Empire Captain, man. That Empire Captain was working him. Blood Hall Coven is moving some more troops. But they don't really have a lot of troops, and we should be able to overpower them with the Lothern Sea Guard. Or the Skaven. Are you going to go attack the dwarves? Yeah, they're attacking the dwarves. And they won the battle there. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. Okay. So, a mass of treasury of... Why, why 27, 27? Is because it's just a thousand more than what I have? I guess so. Wow, 20 wave fragments? That's... Yeah, we'll take that. Okay, imminent rebellion, that's fine. Okay, negative growth, that kind of sucks, actually. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it still kind of sucks. We're going to get the armor for the reavers, because... Uh, we actually can put some Reavers in our army now. It's going to hurt our income, though. Maybe, um... I definitely want a lot of Lothar and Sea Guards. Maybe we should dump, like, one Spearman and one Sea Guard and put a couple of Reavers. First, let's do this. Let's move up a little further because we can and then we'll recruit. We don't have much money though. We can get two Reavers. Yeah, they're 195 upkeep, so my upkeep actually should be similar. Alright. Yeah, I know we're going to have a rebellion there. That's fine. We're going to go put it down. But at least that'll give some diversity in our army so I'm not just spears and archers with spears. Look, the uh, Sentinels of Zeti are the uh, the rebels. How appropriate. All right, so a great mask to celebrate Vol, the maker. The floor is cleared so the king and the Everqueen may dance. The platitudes and graciousness from the guests are unbent, unending, but afterwards many are left wondering who the Phoenix King will bestow the honor of the second dance. All eyes are watching, so who are we going to dance with? We can dance with the Matriarch. And we get a scout, which gives us a chance of spotting armies. We get an Illyrian horse master, which gives us extra speed. Or we can gain influence by insisting, but we lose trade. Or we can get a happy populace by paying 12 influence. The happy populace, I, 
think is pretty helpful because it lasts for five turns. It cost us 12, though. Yeah, let's do it. I, I kind of want the happy populace for a while. I'd like to avoid some rebellions. Okay. We had a little extra influence anyway, and I and it takes 60 influence to recruit one of the best lords, and I think 15 for kind of a mid-tier one. And then I want to say it takes 40-something influence to get you a good agent, which we need an agent. Um, but we don't have the right buildings yet. We need to get our colony built up before we can recruit an agent. If we take a look at the building tree, which I should have sown this already. Um, in terms of getting the agents, if you want a mage, you got to build this archive. Um, if you want a, a noble, we have to build the elven gardens. And I want to say there's... Yeah, this lore master of Hoeth. Um, we have to build this grand repository, which is the next level up. I believe those are the three agent types that we have access to. Yeah. War masters are invariable gifted warriors. So they're probably like a mix of magic and melee, and then you have a melee and then magic would be my guess. Okay, let's do this. Time to take down the Sentinels of Zeti. Heal my power. Back. We'll just auto-resolve this. Not really worth our time. As I expect. I go then. My infinite knowledge is yours. Okay. Now is not the time. The reformed sentinels of Zeti have been unformed. Oh, we haven't um, built the right buildings. Oh, sweet. We got the quest to the that, so we got even more. We got our wave fragments, which is helping us catch up a little, though we're still behind some. Quest issued. Maintain 17 util units, and we get another 1,500 plus wave fragments. I mean, we have some extra money from that quest, so I don't see why we couldn't just build up a few extra units uh, over the next couple of turns. We don't need to do it right this instant. I'm going to move further over here so we can definitely get to the Chamber of Visions. And then Teclas ranks up. This gives us the extra ammunition and the faster reload. Let's finish that, and then maybe we'll unlock um, some more abilities. If we did Kindle Flame plus Flaming Sword of Ruin, that could be pretty cool because it gives our guys fire damage, and this gives people extra weakness to fire damage during that time. Or when we're casting, so it's only when we're casting. And it lasts for 15 seconds. Well, that would go along with part of the time for the Flaming Sword of Ruin, which that'd be kind of neat. We definitely need to use Teclas' magic prowess, since he's not so capable in melee. Okay, we are ready to attack the Dark Elves. We can gain influence by giving up treasury, which may not hurt. We do have a decent amount of influence right now, though. We can take a leadership loss and gain 10 influence. We can increase recruitment cost for five turns and gain 10 influence. Uh, maybe let's pick up this court attendant. I don't know that it's going to be like super helpful, but you know, it, is it going to hurt? Probably not. Alright, Chamber of Visions. We're going to declare war on the Bloodhall Coven. Destroy them. Feel my power. And I actually want to fight the Dark Elves because we my haven't seen any on the battle map. And yeah, let's just see what the map's going to look like. Okay, it's a choke point map. Gods have spoken. I do like the choke point maps, but like I said, this is where I did see a little bit of AI screwiness. Um, it wasn't every time, it was sometimes. But I like the idea of choke point maps coming back into the game. Is that lightning back there? Yes, it is. That looks cool. Man, the ambience of these maps is pretty spectacular. Get a little bit lost in it sometime, and then the uh, music is really cool in the background. Yeah, this is definitely some elfy music. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. Techless. Okay, we, our reavers can forward deploy. Master of the White Tower. Okay, we're going to 
gonna start moving forward. They're gonna, they may try and just move through the choke point because I have a missile advantage. Usually the AI doesn't want to sit back and camp when it thinks it's gonna get outdone. All right, let's check out their army. Dark shards with shields. Ooh, an armor-piercing crossbow unit. That looks freaking awesome. Looking good. What are these guys? Black Art Corsairs with hand bows. Black Art Corsairs. Black Art Corsairs. Dread Spears. Black Art Corsairs. Hey, these Dark Elves are looking cool. Check it out. Dreadlord. A Death Hag. And then some Black Riders back here. I, I'm not going to lie, man. The, the Dark Elves are looking pretty good. Aesthetically. But they'll be looking better, you know, dead. Just get a feel for these guys. Not a great charge bonus, honestly. How do we stack up against a... Similar to the Dark Riders. Yeah, similar to the Dark Riders. Ooh, back, back, back. Okay, wait. I think we have a ranged advantage, so let's park up here and use it. Uh, let's actually not attack just, just yet, because we'll be too close to their bowmen. Let's try and draw those Black Riders in a little closer. Okay, now is the time. Get them. Okay, take out their bowmen, no charge. Frostheart Phoenix get in there and give some assistance. I'm not in a good position to uh Let's drop this so that we don't have as good a chance of overcasting or uh miscasting. Trap some of these guys out here, really use our magic to our advantage. Our spearmen helped us crush that little pocket right there and then our bows are raining it down while we also got a good flock of doom we cleaned up the dark riders so let's push back in on this flank techless yeah we don't really like taking a high elf or a dark elf infantry head-on because they're gonna be superior for the most part chase these guys down sword masters get yourself in there Take out these crossbows real quick. Got a hold of these dark shards with shields. Okay, here is the opportunity for our reavers to make a pretty punishing rear charge. Perfect. Okay. Let's clean up these guys real quick. Let's change our target to these black art corsair hand bows. Okay, so we're cleaning up the um, enemies here. Let's drop our spell and feeble the hag there we go gonna heal techless perfect so we've smashed the dark elves reavers let's pull out and rear charge these black art corsairs that are uh, going crazy here those Illyrian reavers look freaking awesome Silver Helms look even cooler. High Elf units look really nice as well. All right. So victory is ours. So we've defeated the Blood Hall Coven. And we will be able to take the Chamber of Visions. Is that what this place is called? I think it's the Chamber of Visions. Those cavalry add a nice touch, giving us access to run down archers and do some rear charges. Got some nice gold off that too. Plunder and pillage it is. Yeah, we're gonna occupy. So that game says a couple more influence. Money's good. Got more from the treasury, more wave fragments, and then the best part of this is that we can build the uh, building in the chamber of visions. That's gonna give us access to more wave fragments every turn, which we badly need. I'm going to actually start with building for growth there. Techless levels up. I'm not terribly worried about, I mean, speed and charge. Actually, charge bonus for the Illyrian Reavers and Silver Helms would be pretty great. I'm not going to lie. But um, let's let's get this Shield of uh, Safri here. And then maybe Kindle Flame and Flaming Sword of Ruin. Let's, let's build on the magic of Techless since that's his main focus. And then we'll work on some of the unit Ready. buffs. Okay, we picked up the way fragments. What do we got here? So if we want the War Crown of Saf uh, 
Safari, we have to build the Shrine of Esirin. And the Sword of Teclas, we need a few more units. And since we have the money and we have time to train the units, this would be the appropriate time. So if we need three more units, maybe one more Reaver. And then um, let's get a couple more of these Lothern Sea Guards. This is probably going to put us in the negative, but it's going to make our armies stupid strong. We can get access to Silver Helms by building it back here too. Probably more trade goods would be the smartest thing to build first. We can get up to the Lothern Sea Guards with shields, which we'll eventually want to switch. Actually, let's, let's focus on the harbor, and let's focus on the Pottery Maker. And then here... Could go for the extra growth. Growth isn't that bad, to be honest. And I could use the extra income from this uh, crap. Well, actually, we need this to train a noble. How about we build the garden for now just to get the noble trained? And we'll switch it over to the other settlements or somewhere else later on. Actually, we only need it in a level 2 settlement. Which means that we could build it over here. Yeah, we could build it over there. This one unlocks trade advancements. What's under trade advancements? Armor for chariots, speed for chariots and Illyrian reavers, upkeep for dragons, which we don't need yet, income from trade, great weapons, growth in all provinces and income from ports wouldn't hurt. Public order wouldn't hurt. So there's some helpful stuff in here, honestly. And it gives us an extra Income from ports. Hmm. Let's build it. Chamber of Visions. Okay. Oh, we can issue the commandment here to get the extra growth. Perfect. Look at that storm. That looks cool. Woo, looking nasty out there right now. So there's a treasure here, and there's another one up there. We definitely want to collect those treasures at some point also. Opposing... Alright, so Clan Moors has started a ritual. Um, we're not going to get worried about it. I hate that they beat me to it, but there's, there's not really a big reason to be super concerned about it. Sometimes it may be tempting to start trying to throw out, like, um, armies to, like, intervene and stuff. But there's really no need. Um... By, by doing that, it's, it's not going to help us right now because it's just the first one and we'll end up wa uh, wasting the a ton of money. Is under attack, my lord. The winds of magic shriek and eddy about it in strange formations for a mighty ritual is underway in some distant land. The power of the ritual pulls and distorts the vortex, yet there remains a chance to intervene. Find the whereabouts of those that channel the ritual and attack before its completion, my lord. Control of the Vortex must not fall into enemy hands. Yeah, we're not going to worry too much about that right now. Like I said, we're going to just we're just going to chill. We need up to 350. We're only at 175 right now. So yes, we are a pretty good ways behind, but it, it's good. We'll chill. There's ways to make up for it, and we're not gonna we're not gonna get overly freaked out at this point. This will help us right here because this gives us an extra 10 wave fragments every turn. And then um, I'm thinking for this. Uh, settlement here since it's kind of out uh, it's it's a little bit on the frontier right now there's probably some Skaven or something over here we'll go search but I'm guessing there's Skaven might as well just build the war hall and um, the ferry or actually let's do this instead we're gonna put this in so we can train a noble and put a noble in our army That'll help Teclas a lot, having the Noble around to help him take on enemy lords. And it's not ideal, but I'm just going to keep dumping research into here because I don't have anything else that I can do until I get the right buildings. Yeah, let's just wait and save a little bit of our money so that we don't get too drained of resources. I'd like to get to the Blood Hall here. We should be able to sail to it. And with the new units we're recruiting, we should be able to manage the enemies at the Blood Hall. I wonder if we could open trade with the Spinosotec Dwarves since they took this settlement out here at the Golden Colossus. Let's check it out.
getting a trade partner in the dwarves would be very handy. The armies of the world march upon the ritual site, my lord, for there is still time to prevent its fulfillment. If you cannot He's just telling us about intervention power. armies, and you can do intervention armies by clicking on this one, and you can pay for the intervention army, but it'll probably just lose and we'll end up wasting a lot of money on it. You can't control the intervention army, which is kind of crappy, but I can understand why, because if you could control the intervention army, it would be ridiculous. Um, wait, I thought I recruited more units here. I guess I did it wrong. That's irritating. That's going to get two more Sea Guard and one more Reaver. Whoops. Alright, well, let's go ahead and end a couple turns then. We're going to go on the negative. Oh, I forgot to check on the Dwarves. Let's check on that. Fast forward here. Okay. Um... Check on Spinosotech Dwarves. We still can't trade with them. It says we have to have a trade route um, open to their capital, which I think means you have to have roads from one of your settlement to their capital, which I have right here. That must not be their capital. Yeah, it has to be unbroken to their capital, which... Yeah, see that road? It doesn't go through there. It comes down from these lands so that's why we can't do it okay okay we're one turn from doing that uh, we need to probably go ahead and spend the money well, we're not gonna have much money but we're gonna go ahead and spend it there run that upgrade we need to go finish off the Dark Elves, and then we can pick up Only that treasure. Underestimates his adversary. They want a peace treaty, which means that they're easy pickings at this point. Yeah, that should mean they are easy prey. So, treasuries up, influence, wave fragments. Fantastic, because we are behind as it is. Maintain 17 units. We got 20 more wave fragments and some money that we badly need. Okay, the quest is issued, so we can win the battle for the Sword of Teclas now. Sweet! The Sword of Teclas gives us 75% weapon damage for 31 seconds, 44% melee attack, 60% uh, percent armor piercing damage. Very, very nice. Wow! It gives us way more armor piercing damage. It gives us mis uh, missile resistance, which is great. And it takes away upkeep costs. This is definitely worth getting after right away. So let's jump into the battle for the Sword of Teclas. Uh, where at? I wonder where it is. Teleport? Oh, it's way up on Ulth 1, down on the southern end of Ulth 1. Yeah, or actually it's at Vol's Anvil, which is that a Nagaron? It may be a Nagarond, actually. Wow, we are up against some serious dark... Oh my gosh, Black Guard of Nagarond. Woo! And the Harganeth Executioners. Witch Elves, freak! Ooh, this is going to get pretty hairy. <laughs> this is going to get pretty hairy. It's a good thing we got a Lother, Lother and Sea Guard so we can own these guys. Because our infantry is going to have their work cut out for them. Look at the balance of power here. Could potentially get some uh, reinforcements, though. Tyrion might come in with some Silver Helms and Dragon Princes. Sweet. Let's fight the battle. We're going to want to take up a defensive position. It's too bad I don't have a Bolt Thrower for this. Because um, this is a... Choke point. Whoa, if it's a choke point, though, man, our archer should be able to massacre the enemy here. So, this is good for us. Let's listen to the speech. I see the Witch King's armies, but not Malekith himself. They say he is scared of me, that he worries about a prophecy foretelling his doom by a magic wielder of male aspect. Perhaps he cowers on his black ark. Do not show these fallen kin mercy, for they have never shown us any. For Lilith 
for the Phoenix Throne, for Alt One. <laughs> Teclas has a cool voice actor. At least it sounds pretty cool to me. It will be done. We will obey. Okay, let's get in position. If we face them at the choke point, we can funnel them into our spears. Agreed. So here comes the choke point. Let's move our archers up behind. Let's get a couple of reavers to this flank. Let's see what we're up against immediately. Some dark shards. Now, we don't want them to get our sword masters of Hoeth. So let's actually just put our shields up front and keep the sword masters back as it's kind of like a reserve. Teclas up front. We might net these guys up. We're definitely going to use some Doom Flock on them if we can get them bunched up. And we should outrange the Dark Shards. There we go. Mess these guys up with the Doom Flock. Yeah, I'm gonna keep wrecking the Dark Shards. Let's get ready to help take out their infantry quickly. So when it hits our spearmen, we want to start rear charging. Okay, Dark Shards are dropping. Y'all give me just a minute. Or actually, I, I'm gonna. I'm getting a call, but I'll call him back in just a second. Okay, rear charge. Let's rear charge here. Techless. Drop another Doom Flock. Take these guys out. Okay, we've cleared out. Uh, let's save our ammo. We're going to need all the ammo we can get. Let's move our Swordmasters into combat. Our rear charge is doing the job. Get over and clean up the rest of these infantry. All right, so initially successful at clearing out the first wave. I see a war hydra out in the distance, so let's get ready for round two. Okay, sword masters. Sea guard. Back into position. All right, everybody's moving back into position. One of their dread spear. No, it's broken. Okay, we're good. Techless, let's get up front and uh, see if we can drop a. Oh, their bleak swords came back. Still got an overcast, even though I used the ability. That's frustrating. Take down the War Hydra. Let's move our cavalry back just a little bit. Okay, our Sea Guard are unloading on the War Hydra. Wow, we did. Oh my gosh, that flaming attack from the War Hydra did massive damage to our spearmen. Take that thing down. Shoot her! Victory is assured, sir! Darn right it is. Bring down that War Hydra. Okay, so the War Hydra is dead. All right, keep working on the uh, shards. Oh, right here we got guys moving around our flank. Take them down. Let's come do some rear charges. Techless. I don't think we have enough for an overcast. Should go ahead and heal at this point. Okay, we're gonna run through the gap. Oh crap, those Black Guard and Nagaron. Let's fix the Black Guard with our archers. We'll we'll take them into melee and then start working on a rear charge. Uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth are just back here getting slaughtered. So let's move them in too. So we got those guys fixed. Cavalry. Rear charge right here. Uh oh, that's Malekith back there, and there's a bunch of harpies headed in too. Where's our reinforcements? Okay, rear charge the Black Guard. We're not going to want to stay in this combat for very long. Ooh, Malekith just dropped a nasty spell on us. Get the Reavers out of here. Crap, crap, crap. The Harpies are going to come trap our Reavers in combat here. Oh, dang, we're losing our Reavers. Okay, those Nagaron, Black Guard of Nagaron are really 
messing us up on the flank. All right, we got to take Malekith down if we want to have a chance here. Okay, they got some Cold One Dread Knights. Oh, boy. We need our reinforcements. Reinforcements, please. All right, Malekith is getting worked by our Sea Guard, but these Cold One Dread Knights are, oh, man. Attacked in the rear. Crap, those are Witch Elves. The Witch Elves are screwing up my unit to where they're, like, just going crazy. All right, our reinforcements are here. Sweet. There comes Tyrion. Thank you, brother. Oh, Teclis gets a nasty charge from Malekith, but Malekith being gunned down by the Lothern Sea Guard. Look at this sweet, sweet combat. The Witch King's down. Witch King down, folks. A shameful display! That's right, Witch King. It was a shameful display, come to think of it. Oh, I don't want to lose my Swordmasters of Hoeth, but they appear to be safe. Let's get into the fight. Let's drop another one here. Okay. Got reinforcements. Let's get cavalry back over for a rear charge. We've wrapped up uh, some of the Black Guard of Magaron, and we're breaking the rest. Our Silver Helms and Dragon Princes coming in to save the day, driving out what's left of the Dark Elves. That was an epic battle, folks. That was cool. I really liked that. That was good. So we've won the battle for the Sword of Teclis in the battle. I do hope you all enjoyed that. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, Malekith himself coming into the fight, but the the Sea Guard folks, that cavalry comes in handy too, though, for the rear charges. Helps us break their infantry a lot faster. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'll see you back on the next one. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.